change can sound really scary. And to better understand the concept, we talked to Tom Cheesewright. He's a self-described applied futurist and a best-selling author of a book called High Frequency Change. He helps global brands build strategies for sustainable success, whatever the future holds. Tom is a frequent contributor to the BBC and The Guardian, and we spoke with him earlier on Microsoft Teams. Hi, Tom, and welcome to The Download. Thanks for having me, Jennifer. And I've got to say, I love your background. It's really cool <laughs> and probably one of the best from the show. Welcome to my workshop. Let's talk about your book, High Frequency Change. You demystify the notion that change is now happening at a more intense pace than it did in the past. So I think lots of us feel like change is happening faster. In fact, I know we do. When I've surveyed thousands of adults, about 70, 80 percent come back and say, yeah, I feel like change happens faster now. But we know that not everything is changing that quickly. I'm sat here in a 140 year old house. And yet you know, we have this shared sense and certainly something's happening. So I set out to try and understand why that was, why we feel destabilized and actually why I get these calls as a futurist from big corporations saying, help us understand what's going on. And the conclusion I came to was something to do with that with globalization, to do with technology. The way we've kind of shrunk the world, augmented human beings, accelerated innovation, contracted supply chains, it's allowed us to move ideas, products, services, media around the world at an incredibly fast rate. So that although not everything's changing faster now, lots of things really do. And it disrupts businesses, it disrupts cultures, and leaves us with this sense of destabilization. That's what the book was about but really it's a, it's a book that's kind of come of age this year when so many of the trends we've seen that do destabilize us that do transform things have accelerated an incredible pace through this pandemic. How do we build athletic organizations and how do we reconcile short-term necessities and business requirements and long-term planning? So if, if high frequency change is the problem you've got to ask what is the solution? And the answer I came up with after lots of work with, with big corporations and small around the world was that really we need to try and translate organizations or give organizations some of the characteristics of great athletes. So you look at the great athletes, what do they do differently to you or me? I'm not saying you're not a great athlete, but you know, I'm certainly not. And the first thing they have is they have great senses. They're really, really good at, at seeing what's going on, at reading the environment, reading the game. You know, I'm British, so it's a soccer analogy. But it's you know, those great midfielders who can sort of pick a pass over 40 yards with barely looking up. They've read the game, they know what's going to happen, and they can play in advance of everybody else because they've got that foresight. The first thing organisations have to do to be athletic is build that foresight. But that ability to see the future is no good if you can't take decisions quickly. And this is something that so many organisations struggle with. They are very sort of sclerotic and slow and gummed up and decisions don't happen very fast. So you've got to get those problems out of the way. You've got to distribute power to the edges of the organisation and you've got to move information faster through the organisation to those people in power. And then the third thing you've got to do is you've got to have the build of an athlete. You've got to have that body. And right now, most of our organizations are not optimized for this age of high frequency change. They're kind of built for, for an, an old world sport. You know, modern athletes are super fit. You could maybe get away with being a bit less fit 30, 40 years ago. The same is true of business. You've got to be fit for the age we're in. And what that looks like is being adaptable and flexible rather than totally optimized for the business you're in. Because because of this high frequency change, what the customer wants is probably going to change pretty fast and you've got to move with it. When you outline what life in a high frequency future looks like, you also talk about the skills that we should focus on as businesses and individuals. Please, again, like help us understand this a bit more. Yeah, so adapting to change is really about learning. And you know, learning is a skill we quite often lose in business. You, know, you think about someone in a senior leadership role, they've maybe been in their industry for 20 or even 30 years. And you know what? They kind of think they know it all. They may not have a big ego, but you get inured to new information. You think you're the expert and you sort of forget about how much you don't know. And what I try and get my clients to do is, is relearn how to learn. And one of the first things I tell them to do is go and get a new hobby. 
Go and do something you've never done before where, you know, eight-year-olds are better at it than you are. And in my case, that was learning to roller skate. You know, at the age of 40, I went to learn a roller skate and watched eight-year-olds skating past me around the rink much, much better than I was. And I fell over and I hurt myself, but I learned. And I really sort of relearned three critical skills. And it's these three critical skills that I'm always telling parents to try and teach their kids or senior leaders to try and teach their junior members of staff. The first one is about discovery. I call it curation, the ability to discover and qualify information. So critical in this age of fast moving information and particularly of fake news. The second critical skill is about creation. Can you synthesize something new? Do you know how to experiment and test and iterate? And the third one is about communication. And certainly if you go and learn a new hobby, the first thing you do is learn to communicate with a new group of people. And those skills of communication are so critical now because actually being able to collaborate, being able to work with others, being able to sell the ideas that you've created are some of the skills that will continue to differentiate humans in an age of increasing automation. So I know what to tell my kids on what they should focus <laughs> on <laughs> for a university. Awesome. Um, do you have any final word of advice on how to best deal with change. There's this general sense that, that as human beings we don't like change, that we're sort of innately conservative, that change scares us, and I don't think that's true. I think the issue is we're so used to change, particularly in a work context being negative, that we're naturally defensive. And I think if we can convince people that change is a positive, get people to learn to experiment, get people to play actually at work and practice with change, it suddenly starts to become something much more joyful, something that's exciting rather than scary. And so I think introducing that culture of experimentation, that culture of play into the workplace is really, really important right now. Yeah, love that. Great advice. Tom, thank you so much. Your book, High Frequency Change, is now available on audio, which is great for people like me, because I love when the author is actually telling me their story. And good luck with your flux capacitor in the background here. <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>